Hello, my name is Anthony, and I had a massive reaction to a prescription drug called Stellara, which is still approved and it's on the market today. I began to lose all the skin on my entire body, from the soles of my feet to my scalp and everything in between, including my private areas, which really make things horrible. The process feels like a bad second-degree burn that won't heal. It is horribly painful, and I cope with a massive amount of bleeding, along with constant risks of infection. The disease is called erythrodermic syndrome, and it's an extremely rare autoimmune disease which has a 60-plus percent fatality rate, if not given immediate emergency care. M most people who experience this seem to only get one or two flare-ups, which are the whole skin loss, in an entire lifetime. But unfortunately, I have had dozens of these with no end in sight. Each one of these cycles lasts about three months and is the most excruciating, inhumane suffering that I have ever imagined. I thought that I was a pretty prepared guy. As a lead computing asset manager for the Boeing Airplane Integration System, I received awards, stock options, excellent raises, and I was being groomed for executive level management. I wasn't as prepared as I thought, and I became ill and lost not only my career, but my home, my retirement, my savings, and even my car. To make things worse, I lost my Boeing medical insurance and my private disability for reasons that I'm sure you can relate to, meaning they just stopped it, regardless of how many appeals I wrote. I then applied for Social Security disability, and I was denied four times for my benefits which I've paid into since I was 11 years old. I guess that's the reason so many people dislike insurance. I was the oldest of four, and I had a really awesome childhood. My father recently passed away, but my mother is still alive and doing very well in another state. Before this illness, I had a huge group of lifelong friends, and I was really close to my family which I cherished. I think I unconsciously began to slowly recede into my medical crisis away from my friends and family because I didn't want to be a burden to anybody. At the same time, the worse I got, they also began to pull away from me as well for reasons of their own. But I never imagined that I would become so alone with with less than a handful of friends and family remaining in my life. Not having a strong and diverse support structure with this thing makes coping with an illness like this really hard, and it compounds my isolation and my sadness. People just don't want to watch the person that they care for slowly and horribly suffer in the manner I have. My friends and family had a difficult time even looking at me because of the startling loss of skin and the ongoing damage to my body. Before I became sick, I used to work out almost every day. I used to like running, swimming, as well as camping, surfing, and hiking. I spent as much time outside with my family and friends as I could. Now, I go through periods of time when I can't even make it outside to see everything I'm missing. Most people who get this illness only experience one or two of these dangerous skin loss episodes. However, for me, that is where everything is different. My experience has been constant as I get non-stop cycles of skin loss, similar to a second-degree burn over my entire body with only a one to three week cycle 
in between the flares where I get a little bit of a reprieve. Then it all starts over again. Even with all the doctors I have seen and the treatments tried, no one has been able to stop these cycles. Erythrodermic syndrome is so rare that many doctors I have seen have never even heard of it. These cycles are a complete nightmare. I lose four to five layers of skin each day and severely bleed and get terrible muscle spasms, dehydration, and I risk massive infections like septicemia. I was in the hospital last summer for about 10 days because of severe infections. And also I've had about seven emergency room visits during the same year. I get so dehydrated and with so much of my skin loss, my diet has to be really nutritious or my body can't constantly replenish all the skin. Unfortunately, this illness also destroyed all of my teeth. My first cavity, I didn't get it until I was about 32 years old. And now I have lost all my teeth to this disease. Talk about a total dignity buster. I just stop smiling, I guess, until I can get dentures. Then maybe I can eat again. Because of my appearance, take a look at my photo journal. I was removed from airplanes, asked to leave restaurants and certain stores. The disease is not contagious, but most people are really alarmed when they see me. I used to enjoy interacting and playing around with small kids whenever I was out in public. But since I have been like this, kids are now afraid of me and they think I'm some kind of monster. This just breaks my heart. My best friend Patrick has put together this fundraiser in hopes of saving my life. As my power of attorney, advocate, and best friend, I could never thank him enough for always being at my side through this entire crisis. Each time another flare-up starts, I wonder, is this going to be the one, the one that takes my life? I get such anxiety, and I feel this big need to prepare to finally meet my maker in heaven. The coping has been so hard for me that I began researching physician-assisted suicide, which is available in certain states. I've always had a deep passion for life, so instead, I was baptized for the first time soon after getting out of the burn unit at the University of San Diego Hospital. I don't have a way to get around. I don't have a wheelchair and I really want, I really could use an electric scooter. There are so many alternative treatments also, which look promising for my situation, but without the resources, I lack any opportunity to try. In other countries, they have specific treatments for this, which are not approved in the US. Because of what I've been going through, my best friend put together this amazing fundraiser in hopes of saving my life and to help me to cope better living without skin and for the opportunities of meeting world-renowned physicians that are experts in this type of medicine. I have wanted to try alternative medicines along with possibly seeking treatment outside the US, but because of the lack of resources, I haven't been able to. My quality of life would increase substantially if I had access to an electric scooter and some of the other modalities and treatments, which I don't currently have access to, as I described. When I was discharged from the University of Washington Hospital, the team of doctors asked permission to utilize my case files and my photo journal for teaching students at the medical school. If I had the ability, I would plan to go and meet with several medical schools and share my data and experience with this rare illness. It makes me feel really good to think that my misfortune with this thing could lead to improved treatments for those who come after me. In closing, I want to say thank you. 
It has always been hard for me to ask others for help. This fundraiser and the public interest in my situation is extremely humbling to me. And I am so thankful for every single donation and for the opportunity to educate others about such a horrible illness, which seems to be increasing in its rates over the last few years. So thank you for taking the time to review my story and my photos. I appreciate your donating to a person and an illness that you've never even heard of. Please help by passing on my link to as many of your friends and family as you can. Every small bit of support will help me greatly. For the first time in a long time, I have hope again. Thank you, and God bless.